Hello, this is a video explaining how to use typed entity and why you may want to use it. So um, the module documentation or actually the, the module page says that uh, use type entity as namespace for your business logic. It provides a scope to place your business logic and help you keep your global scope clean of myriads of small functions. So that, that means that uh, instead of doing these things to deal with your entities uh, to get your custom module and then do some business logic on the Im images inside of the articles and changing the ratio. What this does is allows you to create a typed object for your entity. In this case, is file image and uh, it gets the, the aspect ratio just like you would here, you return it there. So um, basically, then in your in your hooks, maybe it, this is, this applies in a form alter or whenever you can just call the type entity by creating the manager and creating passing the entity type and the entity, and that's it. Then you can start calling methods on it. So um, let me show you, uh, first of all, we're going to use uh, a module. I, I installed here my Drupal installation, uh, PM, uh, yeah, typed tutorial, and I created and enabled uh, a module. Oh, actually, I didn't enable it, so I'm going to go ahead and enable it. Trash enable, yes, type tutorial, all right, this should do it. Um, this typed tutorial module depends on typed entity, which uh, is pretty much obvious. So let me show you what this what this contains. Um, this is the the info file. The only thing that you want to keep in mind is that uh, this is a dependency, of course, because this is an integration with typed entity. And uh, since we are going to use in in here, you can see that namespace classes. Um, I want to you I like to use the registry autoload module which is going to uh use the PSR4 proposal to look for your classes. Uh and that is something that's very simple and that we will see in a minute. But that's how you activate PSR4 for the type tutorial module. You just drop this inside of your info file. Okay, so that being said, uh, we have a module file uh, which has nothing yet. Uh, and just by enabling typed entity, uh, you have already gained something. Uh, you don't need to start uh, to integrate your entities in there, but uh, basically this is gonna be why you enable typed entity, because you want to do something special with your entities. But out of the box, uh, and this is a custom script that I use uh, only for development purposes. And I uh, just run this script and use the debugger to, to follow. So we're gonna do that. So basically in here, I'm, uh, I'm saying to, to use the typed entity manager. And then this is basically uh, loading an entity, the node number one. Uh, this uh, would this should probably be already available to you in your hook, uh, as we said before, in a form alter. Maybe you're altering the node edit form, then it would be in something like form pound entity or whatever. Uh, if if you want to load uh, an entity, uh, then you can pass it to the typed entity manager and say, hey, this is a node and uh, this is the actual value of the node. And in return, you're gonna get a typed entity. And what can you do with, with that is you can execute a bunch of methods and I'm gonna show you all of the methods that you can execute. But uh, before that, I want to show you 
how easy it is to get uh, information out of the typed entity. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to execute with drive script and then the route for the script. I'm going to execute that script and my debugger is going to pause there in my breakpoint. So as you can see, I just loaded this entity, which is a node of type article with the title with this title. I'm not going to say it. Uh, and uh, we are about to create a typed entity. So I just stepped over that, and you can see in here that there is a typed entity, and it's a class of this type this type, which is uh, our base typed entity. So out of the box, the base typed entity can get you information about the entity itself. Some things like, uh, okay, I just got this typed entity out of thin air or because a method passed it because another method gave it to it and you know how these things work. Um, and I wanna know which kind of entity I'm dealing with. So you get to call this get entity type method, and that's what you get in, in return. The same for bundle. In this case, uh, this will get you articles because this is a node of type articles. So there you go, article. And also, this integrates with the entity method wrapper, and this will give you the wrapper. Of course, it's an entity tuple wrapper, and and so on. So another thing uh, that's that's basically it, that's just calling methods and there is some logic in the implementation of the type entity class that's, con that's returning those uh, values. So another thing that you uh, can bear in mind is that you in most of the uh, of the context you can pass your typed entity as if it was a regular entity. So imagine that you have some legacy code that uh, expects an entity to be passed and uses some of the properties in there, um, then you can just pass a typed entity in place and uh, most of the time the code won't even notice. So uh, what I'm going to do here is by calling typed entity title, which is not defined in the, in the typed entity class, this will return the actual node title. What this is doing under the hood is saying, okay, as a typed entity object, do I have this title property? No, then ask for that property to the, to the entity inside of the type entity. So basically this is gonna uh, call this, uh, where is it? Yeah, this is gonna call this under the hood. So uh, we can do, obviously, I don't know, picking a random property, CID, typed entity, you can do, you can call type entity CID, it, it returns the same thing. Cool, uh, that works for read and for write. So uh, I stored the time in the now variable, and now I'm gonna write it to, to the updated property. Uh, which is, where is it? Oh, that's a property that I made up, apparently. But that's okay. Um, we're gonna create that property. Then, uh, huh. oh, yeah. Uh, so the last method is to get the entity out of the typed entity. So doing that, it returns our article with the body and the title and the updated. And this is basically just checking that we actually wrote that uh, into, the, into the typed entity uh, and the underlying entity. So uh, yeah, you can use read and write operations on the properties for the underlying entity directly into the typed entity. And that allows you uh, again, to use this typed entity as if it was an entity. So it's 
pretty easy to integrate with with her code. So uh, that's okay. Uh, that's all that this code does. Uh, I'm gonna run it again because I want to show you something. And this is that uh, I just created a typed entity. And you can see that I have a lot of nulls over here. Basically, the only things that I have is the entity type and the entity. So uh, when I'm getting the type, I'm returning this type. But when I'm getting the bundle, unless I specifically ask for the bundle, the bundle is not loaded. So uh, most of the time, everything is just lazy loaded uh, to help with performance. So this is a very lightweight module that uh, only helps you to, to get your code organized, as you will see in a moment. So uh, I just got the bundle. So the bundle is populated. The wrapper is going to be populated as soon as I asked for it. Uh, and I'm going to step into the get wrapper function. So you can see. So basically, it's checking if it's there. And since it's not there, it's going to store it and then create it and then return it. And yeah, that's it. Cool. Um, now for uh, a little bit more interesting things, uh, let me show you how you would implement something like the documentation here. So this is saying that you need to create a typed file image that extends typed entity and that implements this interface, uh, which uh, will just contain the public methods of your, of your class here. Um, so how do we do that? Um, well, remember that we said that we were going to use PSR4. Then that means that inside of your module, you can uh, create a directory called SRC. And then type entity expects uh, a folder called type entity. And then you can create from here, you can create your directories, um, I know, maybe file, or you can create directly your class, PHP class. So what do we call our class? Um, for type entity to discover your, your implementation class, you need to create, um, you need to create your class based on some naming rules, or you can create your class with, your, with the name that you want, but then you will have to uh, implement a module to, to tell type entity, hey, uh, if you find a file that is of bundle image, then go and load this class. So if you don't want to do that and you're okay with doing things like typed, which is fixed, and then the name of the entity, file, and then the name of the bundle, image, all in uh, camel, ca camel case. So if you're good with that, then uh, you're probably not going to need to implement that, that hook. But I'm going to show you how to implement the hook afterwards. So for the namespace, since this is PSR4, uh, the base namespace is Drupal. That's fixed always. Then it's the name of your module, which is typed and then you start typing the directory structure that you have under SRC. So that would be typed entity. Okay, uh, I'm not adding file because I just created file, but I'm not using it, so I'm gonna delete it. Cool, so basically your name space is Drupal, which is fixed type tutorial, which is the name of the module, and then type entity, which is the, uh, the path inside the SRC folder inside of your module. So cool, we've created the, the class. Uh, we wanted to extend the type entity base class. So uh, with this, you inherit all of the functionality that's declared into type entity and uh, probably implements an interface 
that doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to create a file just so PHP Storm doesn't complain. File entity image interface. Okay, this is an interface. This one extends file, oops, typed entity, in, entity interface. Good. Um, and oh, I messed up my naming here. Sorry. File entity image interface. That's totally not correct. It's typed file image interface. All right. So I'm gonna change this and yep, that works. So um, basically with this, what we are gonna do is uh, every time that we call type that empty manager and we pass, let me do this. If we pass a file and that file happens to be an image, then the class returned for typed entity is going to be our new class, which is cool because now we can go ahead and say, um, I want to do this just copying and pasting for, for the example. And uh, yeah, we, we can just paste the and do whatever function that, that we want and this will get called. So um, this, is, this is just regular stuff. Um, I, I like uh, how you can do things like imagine that this is uh, a file image. Uh, well, maybe a file is not a good example. Uh, let me find an example that I have somewhere. Type node artic type article. No. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. You can do interesting things like getting related. Uh, sorry, typed entities. So basically. In, I have this in the typed entity example module that comes with the typed entity. Uh, make sure to check that out for other implementations. So basically in here what I'm saying is that uh, whenever I get uh, a node typed entity, I can call get author, which will give me a typed entity of user. So we can get, uh, you know, chained typed entities and uh, that would allow me to do, um, say we start with the node. So we do typed node equals typed entity manager create node node. Okay, we have our type node and for a time from my type node, I can get get author this returns, as you can see here, another typed entity. And this, in this case, is a uh, typed entity of type uh, user. And you can do something like get picture, which could return uh, our typed file image. And then get as what's aspect ratio. Yeah. I'm going to just copy this, get aspect ratio. So as you, as you can see, you, ha you may have uh, a lot of small classes with a very defined purpose, which is uh, doing the business logic of your entities. And there your integration code gets really simple and you can you know, uh, chain them and get this stuff done in a very clean way. Um, so yeah, that's basically 
uh, that's basically it except for the the auto discovery mechanism so um, when you pass in and I'm gonna return here to our custom script and maybe remove this when you pass in an entity and its entity type actually let me yeah this is uh, a bit cleaner uh, so if you pass the entity type and then uh, the entity it will it will first look for typed entity type obviously this is replaced by the actual entity type name and then the bundle as we said before so uh, for our file it was typed file image for an article it would be typed node article for a tag it would be type taxonomy term tag and taxonomy term would be like this and not like this okay type taxonomy term tag or whatever uh, where if you create custom con so, sorry custom images no custom entities sorry uh, if you create custom entities uh, with their bundles they are gonna be picked up uh, immediately just like that so uh, you want to follow this pattern this is the first class that's gonna be looked for but what if it doesn't find this class then it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna try to return this so imagine that you didn't have your typed entity file image and we are removing it but what you had instead is a base class that's typed file again Drupal Drupal type tutorial typed entity and it extends typed entity okay blah 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 so uh, if you didn't have the typed file image you only had the typed file and this is a this is a good way to 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 do uh, your uh, your organization of, of your code so uh, this would be the the type entity that gets returned the class that gets instantiated so what i do all the time is i create both the typed file and then the typed uh, file image typed file video typed file etc so my typed file image actually inherits instead of typed entity it inherits so if i was doing typed file image i don't make it inherit from typed entity but from typed file if that makes sense i hope it does uh, so the idea is that you accomplish two things with that first thing is that you have a typed entity for the bundles that you have not created and in there you have all of the logic that is common for uh, that particular entity type uh, like for instance for typed node all nodes have an author so all of the uh, all of the business logic related to the author can be uh, included in the in the node or all of the nodes potentially have comments so you could uh, do the comment fetching fetching in the typed node but uh, not all of the nodes have tags articles do but page does not unless you add them um, so uh, dealing with the tags would go inside of the typed node article so 
Uh, basically, that the two things that you accomplish having a base class to to get all of the of the logic that belongs to the entity type, and uh, then inheriting it in the in the more specific typed entity classes. So what if this class is not found either? Then, as we saw at the beginning, it falls back to typed entity. And this is the class that has all of these methods. So uh, basically, if you make this one inherit from this one, and this one, sorry, and this one inherit from this one, what you, what you have, it's a nice tree-like organization uh, and you can inherit cleanly the, the methods that you want. Uh, and that introduces you to all of the OOP possibilities that are open to you and design patterns and all of that goodness that uh, you can now use for your, for your entities. If you happen to dislike this naming pattern, you can override that by implementing a hook. Uh, so ty oops. type to tutorial type. The hook is typed entity registry info. And if we go to the example, you see that uh, basically you declare an associative array with, uh, with the name, this can be whatever. This is just the, the name for the registry, for the code dealing with this. So the important is that you have your entity type, your bundle, and the class. So uh, the same rules apply here. If you don't provide a bundle, this is like this. Uh, this is the one that's going to be used for all of the entities regardless the bundle. If you do prov provide a bundle, this is only going to be used for the entities of that bundle. And in here, you can specify the exact class that you want. So um, you can do this or uh, you can you know, use the, the naming pattern. So I hope that helps. Uh, basically, there is not much functionality to, to be shown because this is just uh, a way for you to, to organize stuff and uh, hopefully start writing a small and very uh, focused classes that then you can reuse throughout your code instead of having to, and coming back here again, to create all these methods. So uh, in here you can uh, now spot that uh, this is the, the article and then, then uh, the article contains an image and you're getting the ratio for an image. So uh, yeah, you can turn that into, coming back here, the typed article, you get the, the typed article like that typed article gets the, the image and that's a, a typed image and you can call aspect ratio on that. So uh, yeah, uh, there is an explanation of uh, basically pretty much everything that I've gone through in this video in the, in the project page and um, I hope that you enjoy the, the module and uh, if you have any issues or pull requests or feature requests. These are not handled through Drupal.org, but through, um, through GitHub. In here, uh, you will have a link somewhere. Should be... Oh, there. You have a link in the project page to the, to the GitHub repository. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully you can provide some feedback. Thank you. Bye.